Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is talk to you about the Cartesian and parametric forms for the equation of a hyperbola. And also, we'll be looking at the equations of the asymptotes. But before we start, the hyperbola that's given by this curve here that you see in red is defined as the locus of a point P that moves in such a way that when you compare the distance P to a fixed point S called the focus to that of P to a fixed straight line called the directrix, when you compare those distances PS to PM, it's a constant value. We call it E and it stands for the eccentricity, where for a hyperbola, E is always greater than 1. Now you'll notice that in this example, and or in other examples, there's two places that P can be. And for this particular video, I've set E to be equal to 2. In other words, PS is twice the length of PM. And you might like to pause the video at various points and just check out that PS is twice the length of PM in both the positions that you see P. Now, the other thing I showed you in an earlier video was conic sections. And we can define a hyperbola when we take two cones, as you see here, and cut them with a vertical plane. The section we generate is a hyperbola. Now, if we take a hyperbola and put it on axis, then it can be shown that the Cartesian form is of the form x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1, where a and b are constants. And in a later video, I'll prove this to you. But for now, all I want to just run through is the points where it crosses the x-axis. We'll talk about asymptotes and also the parametric forms that you can have. Well, first of all, when it crosses the x-axis, we know that that will be when y equals 0. And when y equals 0, you end up with x squared over a squared equals 1, leading to x equals plus or minus a. So we can mark that in here, that this point would be minus a, and this point here would be a. Now, when it comes to asymptotes, let's have a look at what happens when x gets very large. We can see then that the difference between this term here, x squared over a squared, and y squared over b squared, has got to be negligible. We're told it equals 1. So for very large values, we can see that when x tends to infinity, then x squared divided by a squared must be roughly the same as y squared over b squared. And if we rearrange this, make y the subject, then it follows that y would be equal to plus or minus b over a times x. So that's the equations or asymptotes. And if we mark them in, they're going to look something like this y equals b over a times x, and this one down here, y equals minus b over a times x. Now, the next thing I want to look at is the parametric forms of the hyperbola. And there's two parametric forms that we can have. The first one is the hyperbolic form, where x equals a cosh t, and y equals b shine t. And we can see that this will work because if I just label this one here and I substitute these values for x and y into the Cartesian form, then what we get is this, that a squared cos squared t over a squared minus b squared shine squared t over b squared. Well, in this, the a squareds cancel one another out, the b squareds cancel one another out. And you're just left with this equaling cosh squared t minus shine squared t. And we should be familiar with this identity. It equals 1. So you can see that both x and y satisfy the Cartesian form here. 
Now the other type of parametric form that you can get is the trigonometric form. This is where we let x equal a sec theta and y equal b tan theta. And if this is the case and we make that substitution into 1, then we get a sec squared theta over a squared minus b squared tan squared theta over b squared. And again, here we can see that the a squareds cancel one another out and similarly the b squareds cancel one another out. And that leaves us with sec squared theta minus tan squared theta. And you should be familiar with that identity, it equals 1. So we've got then two parametric forms that we can turn to for the equation of a hyperbola. So I hope that's given you an idea now of the Cartesian form, the equations of the asymptotes, and the parametric forms that we can use for the equation of a hyperbola.